Well, good evening again. It's good to have you with us. And uh, I'm going to continue to talk about uh, the righteousness of uh, God. Now, quickly, let's go to Romans chapter 10 and verse 10. And you know the scripture. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 8, 9 and 10, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, righteousness simply means right standing with God. The Bible says there in Romans, the third chapter, verse 22, Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no, there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now, we, we talked about righteousness, and we've, I've also said this, that uh, uh, you have uh, been declared not guilty. Righteousness simply means right standing with God. And I'll get more into detail on last Wednesday's message. So if you hadn't uh, listened to it, uh, it would be good for you to listen to it because I get into more things concerning righteousness. You know, remember 2 Corinthians 5, 21, For God hath made him, Jesus, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And of course, 1 Corinthians 15, 14, see, a lot of times people don't understand righteousness. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 34, Awake to righteousness, and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. So those that has no understanding of righteousness, they're not awake. You need to awake to righteousness and sin not. What does it mean to sin? Uh, well, when you, when you go to God and begin to say that you, you are unworthy and, and uh, woe is you, and, and uh, that's a slap in God's face. God made you worthy, not within your own self, but inside you're worthy. And God made you righteous, and you have been placed into right standing with God. In reality, everything that pertains to life and godliness is inside of you. And really, <clears throat> we don't deserve anything. Every, anything we get, the Bible says, I am what I am by the grace of God. You don't deserve anything. If we get what we deserve, we would go to hell because of uh, the, uh, the sin of Adam that fell on, on the generations but I tell you what, God has redeemed us and saved us and washed us in His blood and made us righteous. That means you stand in God's presence, righteous and cleansed. Now the Bible says in Ephesians six fourteen, Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and on the breastplate, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. See, when you carry that breastplate of righteousness, that is for your protection. And, and you start thinking right things and about who you are in Christ. Romans 5, 15, But not as the offenses, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. Verse 17, notice verse 7. For if by one man's offense... Death reigned by one. That's Adam. When Adam fell, his offense, the Bible says, uh, by one man's offense, death reigned by one. But much, but more, they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. So now you can reign in life, as the Bible says, as kings and priests, because you stand cleansed, and you're also clothed with God's righteousness. You have a cloak of righteousness all about you because God made you righteous. Let me read that again. For as by one man's disobedience, that's Romans 5, 19. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. So we have been, uh, we became righteous 
because of God's obedience. We stand in His righteousness, which is given us by His grace. You know, uh, 1 Corinthians one thirty. But unto him, of Him are ye in Christ Jesus, who God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Now, let's talk about the benefits of righteousness. If I have been made righteousness, what is? There is benefits of having the knowledge of your righteousness. See, when you understand a righteousness consciousness, it will cause you to be bold. People that have a righteousness consciousness and, who, and know who they are, there is no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. When they have that no condemnation, when they have the understanding of their righteousness and their privileges in being in Him, they become bold. For the Bible says the righteous in uh, Proverbs 28 and verse 1, the righteous as bold as a lion. So it gives us confidence when we pray. Not only it makes us bold, but knowing that you are standing in His righteousness. Not now, not in your righteousness. Understand, our righteousness is as filthy rags. Yes, it, it's as filthy rags. As the Bible says, there's none righteous, no, not one. He's talking to those that don't know God. He's talking to the sinner. Those that don't believe God, don't believe in God, don't know God, had not, are not saved. There's none righteous, no, not one. But that verse not talking to believers, but to us. Isaiah says, God says, their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So you are standing in God's righteousness. And therefore, when we have knowledge of that, 1 John 5, 14 says, And this is the confidence that we have in Him. If we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of Him. So let's talk about a few things about the blessings of righteousness. Not only do you, you have boldness, you have confidence. The Bible says, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, that the Lord's ears are open to the prayers of the righteous. So number one, a righteousness consciousness will cause every one of your prayers to work. There in First Peter, the third chapter, and verse 12, the Lord's ears are open to the prayers of the righteous. James 5, 16, the prayer of the righteous avails much. See, that means not the prayers of those that's living perfect avails much. Those the people that has right standing understand the righteousness, understand the right standing with the God the Father. Now the prayer of the righteous avails much. Why? Because you have confidence when you pray. And that the Amplified Bible says the earnest, heartfelt, Continue prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic, and it's working. So, number one, the it it it's a, gives you uh, it gives you uh, your prayers to be answered. It causes the prayers to be answered. Number two, it will knowing righteousness, it will provide for your protection from fear of tomorrow. We understand righteousness; it will provide for your protection from fear of tomorrow. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 31 through 33, Seek first His kingdom and all His righteousness. Keep, seek first the kingdom, and then all these good things are going to be added to your life. Good things will be added to your life for your protection. Number three, righteousness brings stability. Isaiah 54, and, and uh, it says, in, in righteousness you will be established. In righteousness you will be established. So I won't hold you long uh, this evening. There's a few moments with you, and I want to thank you for tuning in. And uh, I don't need to go long because just one uh, portion of Scripture can just turn your whole life around when you understand righteousness. Number four, it, understanding righteousness, it causes oppression, fear, and terror to be far from you. You know, Isaiah 54, 14, you shall be far from oppression and from terror, for it shall not come near you. Isn't it good to know that we stand in His righteousness? 
It's not works that causes you to be born again. Yes, it's not going to church that causes you to be born again. Going to church is good to go because the Bible said, do not forsake yourselves, the assembly of, your, of yourself together. In any reason, in no purpose, no, no reason to that, but said, do not forsake yourselves, the assemblies of yourself together for the manner of some is. Why? Because going to church don't make you a Christian. Going to church helps you to continue walking a Christian in a victorious life. You need that. You need that uh, faithfulness to the local church. So therefore, and the Bible said when you understand righteousness, then uh, it's not what you do. It's not going to church makes you righteous. It's not paying your tithes that makes you righteous. You need to go to church. You need to pay your tithes. Not giving offerings makes you righteous, but you need to give offerings. And it's not doing works or witnessing that makes you righteous. See, you go to church because you are the righteousness of God. You pay your tithes, give offerings. You become a witness because you stand in righteousness. And, and you need to tell other, other people that God's not mad at them, that God has already forgiven them of everything they have ever done. All they need to do is they got to receive that righteousness. They got to receive salvation because if they don't receive salvation, then they will go to hell. You must be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Just because you give to the poor, just because you do great things is good, but there's no sign that you're a child of God. The Bible says, as we begun in the very beginning, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So if you ask Jesus to come into your heart, really say, Jesus, forgive me. I'm, I'm sorry for my sinful life. I'm, I know I can't make it without you. I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I, I, want, I want to receive you as my Savior. And I guarantee you, instantly, the Bible said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things will pass away. Behold, old things become new. What old things have been passed away? It's the unrighteousness way of life has been passed away. And now you have the righteousness of God right standing. So, uh, number five, it, it delivers you from trouble. Knowing righteousness. If you really believe in righteousness, the Bible says in Proverbs 11, 8, the righteous are delivered out of trouble. If you're in trouble, find out more about your righteousness. Find out more about your righteousness, about who you are in Christ. Find out who God is, what He has, and what He can do. Now listen, find out who God is, what He has, and what He can do. Then you will know who you are, and what you have, and what you can do. Then you'll know who the devil is, what he has, and what he can do. But once you know who God is, what he has, what he can do, and you know who you are, what you have, what you can do, then you understand that the enemy, he's nothing, he has nothing, he can do nothing, because he cannot come against righteousness. You have righteousness, you have boldness, you got all these weapons of warfare, the armor of God, and the greater one lives on the inside of you. All of this is received, the Bible says, is received by faith. You know, actually, righteousness, when you understand righteousness and begin to walk in righteousness, it brings much wealth, rewards on earth. It brings much wealth on earth. Proverbs 15, 6. In the house of the righteous, there is much treasure. God wants you to have the best. He wants you to live in the best. He wants you to have all the blessings of wealth. Not only the blessings of wealth, but he wants you to have the blessings of health. I like to say this, that I'm healthy, wealthy, and wise. Because wisdom of how to understand and how to walk in righteousness will bring wealth to you. The house of the righteous, there is much treasure. How does a righteous man get, get much treasure? I believe he does when he walks in the wisdom of God. The wisdom says, do what the Bible says to do. 
Bring all your tithe into the storehouse. That opens the windows of heaven. Or you could say that opens the windows of opportunities. Amen. To heaven for you. So uh, the house of the righteous, there's much treasure. And not only uh, the tithe, but the giving. The giving of planting your seed. So how do you get treasures and, and wealth? Is don't, don't, don't seek after them. Don't dream about it. Don't dream about all having all the black. Just seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these blessings shall be added to you is according to your faith. Always be a giver. Don't just hold back and say, well, I'll start giving. And don't just hold back and say, well, I'm going to put it up for a while until I know. No, you put it up into God's kingdom immediately. Don't let the devil have foothold into your life. So understand righteousness. Think about it. When you think about the word righteousness, you're going to do everything that's right. Going to church is right. That's a manifestation of righteousness. Paying your tithes is right. Uh, uh, giving offerings is right. Loving your neighbor is right. Doing walking in the love is right. All the blessings of righteousness because you do these things because you understand you have right standing with God. You know, Proverbs 14, 9 says, Among the righteous there is favor. Among the righteous... There is favor. Psalms 512, the Lord blesses the righteous with favor. He surrounds him as with a shield. So when you understand righteousness, you say, well, praise God, I've got favor. Bleed God for favor. It's like people will be drawn to you to be a blessing to you when you understand righteousness. Another thing, righteousness will make you generous. It'll make you generous. Proverbs 21, 26. A righteous gives and does not spare. You can give freely because God takes care of you tomorrow. See, so the righteous man, he is a giver. So understand righteousness. And then another one, by righteousness, you have joy. Proverbs 29, 6. The righteous sings and rejoices. So when you have, uh, when we have the understanding of righteousness, I haven't always understood righteousness, and, and we don't have all the answers, but we do know, I do know what God says. I am what I am by the grace of God. You are what you are by the grace of God. There's many people right now, even when they pray, you can tell when they pray that they don't understand righteousness because when they pray, instead of uh, uh, speaking faith in their prayers, they, they, they talk about how unworthy they are. And, I'm so unworthy, Lord. Please help me and, and please be with me, Lord. Be with me. But when you understand the Word of God, understand the knowledge of righteousness and God's righteousness, He said, in his righteousness, since you have been placed in right standing with him, he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake you. I will bless you coming in. I will bless you going out. He says you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. And you cannot be defeated. And then when you understand righteousness, you can quote that scripture. I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. The reason why I can, because of who I am in him, and what he made me to be, for he hath made Jesus to be, God made Jesus to be sin. Jesus did not commit sin, but he became sin. He took upon himself our sin and gave us his righteousness. Now, right now, if you miss it, if you miss the mark, if you have sinned, just quickly ask God to forgive you. First John 1, 9 was not written to the sinner. I mean, when you as a sinner, you can't confess every sin you've ever committed. Uh, as a child of God, when you do miss it, what it is when you confess your sins, he said, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you. Now, he has already forgiven you of every sin that will cause you to go to hell, the sin of rejecting Jesus. If you, if you receive Jesus as Lord, then uh, you can become a new creature in Christ Jesus. He'll forgive you. 
But as you walk on this earth, uh, talk about the walk of faith, uh, we'll talk about the walk of faith in my next lesson, but if you walk in faith, you walk in faith simply because of what the Bible says, not how you feel. See, righteousness, simply understanding about righteousness and what God has done for you. You are what you are because of his grace. Thank God for many, many years when I was, when I was a younger man, when I was a teenager, uh, young in the Lord, I just didn't understand anything about righteousness because the message, the message that I've heard was God's going to get you for that. And if you commit one little small sin, you're going to go to hell. And, and I was uh, living uh, not in righteousness consciousness, I had a sin consciousness. And, and uh, I believe in those days, I went to the altar every service. I thought I had to go to the altar to every service to, to get saved because I've sinned that way. And, and so I lived in a, in a constant state of, of uh, no joy. And, uh, and, and then going to church was no joy to me because I've always felt like a sinner. I had nothing to sing and rejoice about. I, I couldn't wait for the altar call to give, be given. I, I, I wanted to be saved, and, and uh, I thought I lost my salvation. But let me, say, let me say this. Once saved, always saved, as long as you want to be saved. If you want to turn your back on God, you have the will. You can choose to. But I'm not turning my back on God. How about you? Because we understand righteousness. We know that our righteousness is his filthy rags, but I don't go to God in my old righteousness because he took that old stony heart out of me, gave me a new heart, gave me his righteousness. And now, now therefore, I can have that joy unspeakable. But how do I maintain that joy? The Bible says, thy words were found, and I did eat them. Thy words was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. And the Bible also says that a man has joy by the answer of his mouth. Amen. Another place says, in his presence is fullness of joy. When you understand righteousness, you can walk in the joy of the Lord. It's not by mind, it's not by power, but it's by his spirit, saith the Lord. So therefore, you're going to have joy today, knowing that you have been forgiven, knowing that you stand in his righteousness. Don't let the devil bring you down. Don't let, let him knock you down. Now, while I'm on this subject about uh, words of, of joy, you know, I do send out uh, words of inspiration every so often. And when the Lord gives me a word of inspiration, it's to, it's to encourage you. And if you get these words of inf in inspiration, hey, share that with others. Don't just read and say, oh, that was good. But you know, it blessed you. That's others that can bless. I want you to share that. On, if you see it in the media, you see it on Facebook, if you see it on the email, you know, if it blesses you, send it to your list. Because words of encouragement is so very important. I've had many people say, Pastor, I needed that word. That, that was God's word to me. So I want to encourage you when these words of inspiration comes, when God gave that to me, these gifts, these words of inspiration, meditate on them, study them out because they will encourage you. So I want to encourage you to uh, get in church as soon as possible. If you don't attend Living Word, but go to church where you're supposed to be, and I guarantee you, you'll be blessed. And enjoy your righteousness. Remember again in closing, you're the head, not the tail, but not beneath you cannot be defeated. And again, thank you for supporting this ministry with your tithes and offerings. God bless you. Have a good evening. Thank you for watching Living Word Church online and being part of our eFam. If you joined us on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. And if you joined us on Facebook, please like the page so you don't miss any future events or services. There are a couple ways you can support this awesome ministry. One, by sharing this video with friends and family and getting the word out. Two, by making a financial donation by clicking the Give Now button. This will help us to continue to support our community and do all God has called us to do. Thank you again for watching. God bless.